Hello people, and I'm coming with you today, coming to you today with a whole new thing that I haven't done in a while. This is going to be an EDC gear review. Uh, I was going to break this up into a few, but I have decided against it and that I'm going to review all of these kind of at the same time and that they're similar. In case you have not noticed, uh, I will put it where it is more visible. Uh, right there is a little uh, clock or compass, I should say. If you'll notice, it is on all of them. That, my friends, right there is the symbol of the purveyor of these goods, and that is the Urban EDC Supply. I believe they're out of the Bay Area here in California. And for those of you who don't know, I just gave it away. I am in California. And they per these are uh, exclusives to the Urban EDC Supply store. These are three different things. These two right here are my own personal wallets. I am reviewing these because quite honestly, I bought these. I saw these on, I believe on Best Damn EDC once. Uh, I had seen them on Urban EDC, but I, that was the review I watched. So Taylor Martin uh, had a quick review where he showed these and what the different styles and what could fit in them. Um, I personally, uh, for those of you who want to know, there is the there is the uh, two pocket which is essentially this on both sides right as opposed to this so you get the the slots there is this version which i have both of mine in which is they call the three pocket so you have the two on the front and you have the third on the back along with the card these are side opening they have another one this one is called nut brown giggity uh, black and they have a uh, English tan also with the lighter colored stitching. This is a different one. Oh, sorry. The other one they have is the four pocket, which looks like this. It has two of these on both sides. No, no pocket for the cards. It's no, no pocket for anything or dollars or anything. It is just the two EDC type pockets. This one right here is the Urban EDC Mini Organizer. This one is a bit of a different animal. It has some bits. This one is going to get its own little uh, thing right here without going too much into it. This has the angled cut as well as a sort of a more loose instead of stitched around the side since it is a top loader. Uh, this wraps, wraps around, which gives you a little bit more pocket room for space for those who are Look, and it, al it allows for something that's flat back here to have a little bit more space. For those of you who are wondering what that white stuff is, I made the mistake of actually using shoe polish on my leather. Yeah, I know. Um, but yeah, so here you'll see some of the wear spots on here. And this is another one, and you'll have to forgive me. I will I will get the name and link to Urban EDC, EDC Supply. But this is this is another companion that goes along with. This is a gear pocket. This is just for like knives, flashlights, pens, and all that other stuff. If you have another wallet, which is a really good thing. So I'm going to kind of open this up a little bit so you can see because there's a couple of different things and carries there. One moment. Sorry for the delay there, folks. I wanted to bring this in just so you can get a better look of the at the uh, symbol there. That is the logo that is a different type of, but that is the compass that is the logo for the Urban EDC supply right there that may not be quite as visible. Throw that in there. That is the challenge coin I got. They are all, for those of you who don't know Urban EDC supply, they are a fantastic little shop out of, uh, well, we're talking out of California here. They're out of the Bay Area. They have a lot of EDC stuff. Not all of it's cheap, not all of it's expensive. I have several things on this mat table right now that are from their store. One thing that is not that I wanna make sure that is where this coin came from. This is just a quick little bit. If you have seen my previous review of the Urban EDC F5.5 with the Jesper Voxnes, this is the coin that comes with the original bits and that's where that came. So that's. If you, any of you have seen the F5.5 reviews out there, same outfit that has these wallets. Uh, so to get right into it, my personal carry wallet. You can see it's bent. It's it's been stretched. It's got it's got uh, outlines in it. Oh my goodness! 
And I use this. Yes, I do. In fact, this particular one is probably my most used. And I'll show you this. I'll show you exactly what I use in it. These are most of this stuff you see sitting here is all stuff I'm going to be put in here and why. This is my Cold Steel Lucky one. It is about the size of a, of a good small. It is extraordinarily slim. It is about the size of a good um, like uh, Swiss Army knife or something like that. For those of you who do that, it is one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, it's a good, good, good all around little knife. It fits wonderfully in one of these little pockets. There are other knives that do as well. It is really a matter of that most of them will require. I took the uh, clip off this just to see how it was. I'm going to end up taking it back. If you look real close, you can see both of these wallets have a little mark where I usually have the clips. I'll bring this back where you can see. You can see the marks right there. The clip on the lucky one is usually holding it in place so it doesn't move around or slide out. Just what it does. Swiss, I don't have a Swiss Army knife, so my apologies for all those people that will. If you want to take a look, there are other knives that you can show will fit in here quite well, right? There are slim ones, ones you can take off. Quite honestly, if you wanted to have, you could get a leak in here, right? If you wanted to take off the pocket clip. The pocket clip really, really thickens that, but one of the stainless steel frame lock leaks, absolutely, this is weird. Not just any leak, as you may notice from my uh, size comparisons, but a random leak. Um, it fits a lot of that stuff. I tend to use this little Maritac 3-inch pry bar. It fits fantastically. This one I got from EDC Specialties, another California, another Northern California uh, bit. Now the one that you can see, and you can even see the outline, I have several of these small Leatherman numbered tools that I also use as pry. They fit in there just fantastically, right? They don't tend to slide out. You can kind of try to shake one out, but if you just saw how much I had to do, if that thing's sitting in your pocket like that, it's going to take a while. You're going to have to actually hook, hook that thing and pull it out. So there's Lots of stuff that actually fits in there. Another one that I have used several times, and I'll even throw my uh, thing in here. This right here, TNP Tiebreaker, also from Urban EDC Supply, where I got this one. The larger, larger ones fit in there. It's a pretty good deal. Now, here comes the other part for all of those who are wondering. What about the other stuff? Well, we'll throw little cards in here. Does it do anything cool? Look, it fits, you guys. It really does. Not going to fake the funk with no dollars here. But uh, just getting a few things in here if you want to see how this fits. Yeah, man, these things all slide right on in. Got a couple of stuffs in here. Right. Some gift cards, some cash. You throw a few things on and blam, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> it fits. It fits all sorts of stuff. And you can actually, uh, I'll do a quick little gander. You can actually, I will, I will do this just so that you can see. This is my usual stack that goes in my wallet. Not all of it goes in there. It goes between the two, two slots, some for easy access and some just to make sure I have it on me in case I need to. This is my stack that goes in there. Financial, identification, and otherwise. So it gives you a lot of room. That being said, they are limited in size, scope, and everything else. You carry this much like I often do. And once again, we're just going to say that... Uh, Color coordination is huge. Um, you carry a uh, another tool with you, right? I often carry a larger knife to go with my little uh, Cold Steel Lucky one. Now, if I know I'm going somewhere where I don't need to, or if I just need to grab something quick, I grab my one of my wallets. Usually, they're stacked. If I have it, if I have it loaded for stuff to be in it, if my I, when I usually have this sitting around, I have it, I have it loaded. I have my pry bar, 
my lucky one and all of my ID and cash sitting in one of these wallets ready to go at any moment's notice. If I need to go somewhere, I can just grab my wallet. Ooh. I have a tool for pry bar. I have a little tool for knife for slicing. I'll have all my financials. I usually can do something like grab a, uh, I'll usually do something like grab a little, uh, right, grab a little wiper for my glasses or something. If I do this, I take this, I got a pen, I'm good to go. Now, the cool thing that I like about this, this is the big, this is the uh, Pilot G2 Mini, in case anyone's wondering, this is just the really little one. It does actually hook on really. It doesn't sit in the pocket very well. This is a pop top, right? It's a button, but so it doesn't go in your pocket very well like that, but it will fit if you need to carry it in something else, but it has to fit on top. This, the brown colors, I'll have everything. I don't have the nut brown ones yet. I have thought about it several times, we'll see. But I wanted to really uh, throw these two out there. These are the ones that I use the most. They fit my lifestyle, they fit the way I work, they fit the way I don't, right? Most of the things I need to do, they do. If I grab this, I have I have what I need. Usually it's gonna be a lucky one and one of those two pry bars, either Leatherman, one of the Leatherman types, or the Maritac three inch. It fits great. It's a wonderful little thing. I can do things like keep a little fifth pocket knife. This is more often than not what I end up doing. You know, when you're going to talk about a little pop color, I might have a fifth pocket knife, knife like the Dragonfly. I might have a keychain knife like the Ladybug or my Hummingbird, right? I might, I will almost always, almost always have a secondary knife on me if I'm carrying one of those urban companions, the mini urban companions. Which are those first two? Mini Urban Companion, Urban EDC Supply Exclusive. Three different colors. They come in come in supplies with just the just the two pocket, right? So you got so both sides look like this. Got this version, which is the three pocket, where you've got the two on the front and the one on the back, and then you have a four pocket version that both sides look like this. That's what they have, and they come in three colors. I prefer the three pocket version. The two pocket version I don't think handles what I need as well. Uh, um, only one side has the card slot and I don't have that many cards as well as tools. The one that doesn't have a slot for cash or card, that doesn't have the extra cards but just has more tools. Um, it doesn't, I don't have that many smaller tools to put in here. And for those who want to know what I mean, I this is the thinnest light I have and it stretches the leather to try and even put it in there. This lumen top is pretty small, right? It could almost get in there. I got a little, my little Phoenix LD15R. I could, but it's just, I gotta carry it separate, right? I gotta carry my wallet, I gotta carry this. That's what it is with these things. Which brings me to the next one. We'll hold this out on the side for a moment. And this one right here, the Organ, Urban Organizer Mini. Ooh, this one has some bonuses to it, right? Now, first things first, we're gonna we're gonna jump into a little bit here. We'll we'll do the uh, giant mouse out here. We want to be able to access. Actually, I'll do a heavier one. The mystery gift card out here. Make that white so it's easy to see. All the other stuff that goes in here, we'll keep the magnetic one out, right? So I need to put my cards in here. Don't like it, tough duties. So it fits, right? I can do all the same things. I got my I got my, my money, I can throw it back here. I got my cashola, and I got my front. However, I have found one of the nice things about this with these extra pockets is, well, they they can hold a significantly bit more. Like if I wanna throw, I can, I can still put my lucky one in here and I can throw my Maritech. They kinda get, kinda drown in all that. It's even worse if I try and use my little Leatherman 2 here. So what I have found with this Urban Organizer Mini is that this is not, and it's not the easiest way to grab them, this isn't what I put in here, quite honestly. For those of you who don't know, the Artisan Cutlery Biome is this particular slip joint. As a size comparison, if anyone has never seen this knife, I'll do it quick just so you have an idea. There is a leak next to it, right? 
pair of three, real quick size comparison, okay? So it's pretty, it's pretty small, but still a useful larger size, right? Um, it is, however, significantly, though not necessarily in cutting edge, it is a larger knife, significantly larger and more grabbable and hand-filling knife than my lucky one. Cutting edge isn't significantly longer, but noticeably, it's got a higher grind. S35VN on the cold steel is really hard to beat, even if it's not perfectly heat rated. But 12C27 is a really good steel that'll take a really fine edge and do some cutting if you need it to. It's a, it's tough. It's fine, fine grained if done right, and all that stuff. And this is one of those knives that you can, I mean, I can get a full grip on it, right? You can actually get a full grip. Yeah, it's a slip joint, so you're not doing heavy work. But even with the lucky one, I mean, it's got the four fingers. You can kind of get a grip on it. But this is, this is a pen knife. It's meant to do little cutting jobs. It's meant to just, I mean, it'll open a package. It'll open a, it'll do a cutting job that you need it to. It'll do a little cutting job. You need a bigger knife for a bigger job. And... So, bigger knife. <laughs> uh, if you need a bigger job. But more importantly, is it still slim, right? I'll uh, go ahead and uh, see if I can't bring that. Uh, where did I just set my leak here? <laughs> to take a look at the leak. It's about as slim as a leak. In fact, it's a tiny bit thicker than a leak without the pocket clip. Or at least the frame lock leak, I should say. Fantastic little knife. It does a wonderful job of fitting in there just about as much knife as this thing can hold that way. Right? Got all that stuff in there. Fantastical. I tend to hook the TI TNP tie breaker. That's the TNP TI breaker, by the way. It's like titanium. It's a titanium uh, pry bar. Removable pocket clip if you need it. As well as that pocket clip, if you haven't uh, noticed already, has a little quarter-inch hex driver in it. So not only can you pull that off if you want to to have it, but this thing does double as a hex driver. Technically, pretty sure that makes it a multi-tool. But this is one of this size and this style, something I have found to fit this quite well. One of my other favorites on this thing is about to become very apparent. Not only is it top loading, I can throw other stuff in there. It's got a little bit more room, bigger cards or something in there. It can be a little bit more difficult to get these things out, but that's kind of why they're stuck down in there. It has this other easy access slot. Another little trick. Uh, if you look the mini, uh, the mini pilot here, the G2 mini, I mean, I don't carry this pin in my pocket. This will go in my shirt pocket or something like that. But the idea is still prevalent. And in fact, having tried a couple of my so-called super duper tactical pins here, all right, they don't all, little bit too high, a little bit too tight. There's enough room, but it'll work in there. Ooh boy, I don't even know if this little uh, Reich knives one will get in there. Yeah, that one's not even going in there. This little uh, three-stage thing is a whole different... Uh, Good thing I got a zirconium black glass breaker on my pen that I have to engage because I'll need that at some point in time in my freaking life ever, right? The time that I'm going to be carrying, I'm sure there'll be a point in time in my life where I eat those words, where I'm going to be carrying this pen at some point in time. I'll need to actually pull it out, move my thing, not only not engage my pen, but engage the other side and have that glass breaker so that I can take a pen and smash a piece of glass. That was thoughtful. At least it sounds cool, right? I'm sure that was a useful addition that someone said, we got to have that to sell it. Um, anyway, it is a actually wonderful pen. When it gets right down to this tactical pen, I don't care about the tactical. What I like is the tri is the three way bottom part. If you look, I'm gonna I'm gonna make fun of the tactical part, but the writing part, the narrow thing with the rounded bit and the three, the three uh, level thing where it rolls your fingers. This is an incredibly comfortable writing instrument. I will make fun of it for the tactical part, 
but the writing part where it has that three-way grip that's kind of already set up for your fingers to sit, right? And that triangle grip, fantastic for writing. I can make fun of it for the tactical, tactical part, but I don't get it. But the reason I bought this knife is that is that uh, rounded part on the front and the ease at which it makes writing, which it's a pen. Really wish they hadn't put that in there. Really wish it was just one bolt action that goes one way to the other. Didn't have this in between that engages nothing. But incredibly comfortable to write with. It's very useful, like the thicker one here. This is the Wii Obex or Civivi, whoever they're calling it. If you look at that uh, symbol on the thing, I'm pretty sure that's a Wii symbol. Anyway, great writing instrument. And then, of course... The one that I really do like to fit with this, and you'll see most of my Instagram and other pictures that I take with it. Number one, it's more photogenic with it. It goes with it better, but also it is the tactile turn. Regular, even though it's a little bit smaller, I believe this is the medium length. Bolt action, and I like the bolt action because of how short that top is, which means when I put this in here, bam, I can put this in my pocket. And I have. I have carried this all day like this in my pocket. And I have my pen. The only thing I don't have is flashlight. And most of the time during the day, I don't need it. I usually carry my flashlights selectively. Um, I don't know if everyone else is. I know there are a lot of people who like to carry their light on them all the time. They have some worry about it. I live in the Southwest USA. Um, if it's dark, I've probably planned for it, or I'm not going for a walk. You know, I don't, I don't usually carry a flashlight on me, I, but I do have flashlights in most places where I would need them. And if I do, it's because I'm going on a walk, and quite honestly, more often than not, it is that little Phoenix right there, or the Lumitop. These are my two most carried walking lights. But I use it just for what I just said. I use it to carry when I walk, when I go for an evening walk, or if I'm out in the dark. That's what I use these for most. Again, I have them in other places like my garage and stuff where I might need a flashlight. I have other flashlights that are more powerful. These are my EDC. I carry them if I need them. If I lived up north or someplace where there's more darkness, I would probably be all over the O lights. I would have the waterproof ones. I would have tons of these things because I would have a lot more reason it when it's getting dark at 4.30 sometimes to have a flashlight on me at the beginning of the day. Here, I usually don't. So just a little bit, my EDC needs do not include usually a flashlight. So I don't need to worry about that. For those of you that do, you probably have smaller ones. I will tell you this, I'll do that real quick. There is the ability to put a flashlight on there and the Lumen Top pocket clip does the exact same thing, right? I really do like this Urban EDC Mini Organizer, or Hybrid Organizer. I'll have to get the exact name. I'll put a link to Urban EDC Supply down below. We can go and check out all their stuff, okay? It is a, fa they're a fantastic little store. I have purchased multiple things from them. This used to be the sticker that they sent. For all of you that get it, you get this cool little one. <laughs> Love it. Somewhere between SpongeBob Square Shoes and I don't know what. It's awesome. But that being said, nonetheless, lots of good stuff there. You guys, I if you're into lighters, if you're into coins, if you're into all stuff, I'm going to do a quick pimp out for the Urban EDC Supply simply because I've had really good experience with them. I am not a shill. I am not. I have no affiliation program with them. They have sent knives to other people, not me. I am not on their huge list of awesome people they need to uh, be cool to. But I am a happy customer. I was a happy customer before I did YouTube videos. I am still a happy customer today. So they're a good shop. EDC Specialties. Good shop as well. For a lot of people out there, there's going to be an issue of politics when it comes to this. I don't care. If your politics outweigh a good purchasing decision, so be it. If your politics outweigh good sense, so be it. If you're someone who believes that that's all it is, so be it. I'm not going to try and change your mind in this video. All I'm going to tell you is 
Urban EDC Supply has always done very well by me as a customer without ever pushing their agenda or politics upon me. EDC Specialties has done the same. I have been to their shop. I've been up to their get-together for their Nor NorCal knife meet. I've been inside. I've seen their Medford display. I've talked to the owner and handled some of the knives. They are extremely nice people. I even have a finger cut kit from them. They have tons. Uh, I've got to tell you guys, they have in a lot of other places, I'm saying they have tons of like first aid. They have a finger cut tourniquet. They have a lot of actually wonderful little side things that are fantastic to have if you carry a tool every day. Sharp tools, smash tools, first aid supplies, help, hooks, ways to take care of your knife. They are a very, very extreme Medford dealer if you're into Medford knives. To, if that's what it is, I don't need a knife that big, but they're starting to make some smaller ones that are catching my eye. The Gentleman Jack always has. And the Smooth Criminal is a knife I would probably own if it wasn't for that suitcase handle on the back. So there's my quick little rant about politics and purchasing, right? If you don't realize at this point, politics don't affect my purchase unless the purchase is political, right? If I know that I'm going to go to Hobby Lobby and my purchase of anything at Hobby Lobby is going to further the oppression of those who are not heterosexual, then I won't make that purchase. If the money I spend is going to be used for a political purpose instead of just keeping someone and their family fed and putting food on the table and helping them go, that's a political purchase and I won't make it. But I can tell you right now, Urban EDC Supply, they're putting food on their table. EDC Specialties, that family right there, and the people there, it's a small business. They are just putting food on their table. They're not trying to make a political statement, and they, they just want to be able to make a living. So I don't mind spending my money on those people. We can disagree. We can have a, we can have a good time. We can sit there and talk. We can talk about knives, and we can disagree about politics and agree about how awesome knives are. Or other EDC gear to as I'm doing this. So, quick little bit of that. You might find some things where you'll see, if you follow their Instagram thing, that you might find some political things or where they might actually be people that have opinions. That's okay. Uh, if you don't mind me saying, so is Leatherman. A lot of these places are self-made companies trying to get by with just a few people. Now, I'm not even going to start about Medford because Greg Medford tends to go on rants and I don't even know the guy. I've never met him. But he does tend to rant. He's calmed down, I've noticed. Not all the way. <laughs> and I doubt he would ever shut up. Then again, neither will I. So, hey, there we go. Which brings me to my next point. Going through these. All of these up until now have been essentially standalone carries. Right? You carry your wallet like that, and then you have one or two things you throw in with it. Maybe a flashlight or something or a pen. You know, you go through there. Now I'm going to get to the auxiliary carry. This is the kind of thing that I have and I would carry if I'm using my other backup wallet, which is my little, my fancy, not really fancy, but my fun little carbon fiber wallet, right? Some little plastic metal carbon fiber-y thing that's supposed to be really, really, really cool. And it's nice. If I'm working on my leather wallets, and sometimes, or sometimes if I just want a little bit, I'll take I'll take my cards in this with a little bit of cash, and this is where I will carry the rest. It's like, ooh, how does it? Well, let me show you. Um, ooh, well, this is the biggest one I have out. Best stick Falco. For those of you who don't know, it's a fairly large knife. Oh, let's see. What's one that I can throw up here? Just to give you an idea of the size, Best Tech Falco, Kershaw Bare Knuckle. Let's see if that'll even work. All right. Okay. Fairly large. Kershaw Bare Knuckle will be the next one I throw in here, but I wanted to, to give you guys an idea of what'll fit. Um, the flipper tab is probably the worst, without a doubt, but 
it fits. All right, has that little flap. So if you do have it there, again, this is where a deep carry clip can get in the way. Falco's mostly deep carry. It's up to about right there. That's actually about where the carry is, right? You can see that right there. So where that's sitting is about where the carry is. Here's the thing I do like about the Falco. There is just enough on that sucker with that little angle and everything like that to be able to grab and manipulate the knife from your pocket with just, just, oh boy, am I going to see if I can, there we go. With just the end of it, I had to do it at an angle and grab it with more than that. But you, um, if you practice it, you can actually get it with just, you can actually pull this out. Uh, as long as you don't do it at an angle. And there you go. Sorry, I had to do it with that finger. Uh, not used to doing an angle, but you can do it. It is hard, it is not easy. This is an extraordinarily easily deploying knife. Right? Great action. Another thing I just wanna tell you, quick little bump to the Falco, a knife I enjoy very much. Another knife. This is where, as some people uh, will just say, uh, like a Mr. Shabazz would say, where the pocket pecker part of a knife really comes into play, right? And honestly, if I'm doing a deep carry on one of these, see if I can get it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, if I'm drop, oh, no. By the way, too wide. <laughs> but we might be able to get this in. Yeah, baby, so Kershaw Blur. You can get deep carries on there. It holds. Another fun part, even with the bolt action. Right, You get the bolt into that little bit, bam. If you want to have a lanyard, you want to tie something through so you can pull this whole thing out. I have actually sat here and done this. I have actually carried this right here. Though this wasn't the knife that was in it. <laughs> be perfectly honest, I'll even throw the knife that was in it in there. Because it's a little bit easier to put in here and get around. Boy, oh boy, does this not grippy stuff not want to come out of the leather. Be perfectly honest, what I carried it with was my tumbler. My Kershaw tumbler. Fits all the way in. Lumen top slides right in, pen right there. It's, it's able to be pushed up from the bottom, right? I can get my pen out. I can, this, I can carry. I have taken this off. I have, since I got it, carried the TMP tiebreaker as well. But it was not nearly as easy, right? What I ended up doing, because it was such a pain as I just went and put the lumen top back in, carried these two, and this was my pocket clip. This was sitting in my pocket. This was the clip on my pocket. This is what was sticking out of my pocket. Right? This. In my pocket. All the way down. In my pocket. This was my clip. This is one that wasn't. Is it good? Is it able to do? Oh, this is fantastic. Quite honestly... I rarely carry this, and I am considering at this moment using it as part of a giveaway. For those of you who don't know, ooh, I'm itching to give this one away. It ain't never been opened, you guys. I've never pulled that out of the plastic. I'm itching to give this one away. I need to get more followers and get back up there. Spa 27. Still in the plastic. It's never been flipped. I'm not joking. Thing's never been flipped. It is fully stock. Never been touched by human hands since it left the factory and was put in that bag. That I want to give away. This I want to give away. I actually want to give this to someone who will use it more than I do. I, I used to use this a lot more when I only had um, this wallet. And when this one was like getting, when I was soaking it or when I was pressing the leather or moisturizing the leather, I would use this carry and I would carry separately with this. I found it, I used this less often. 
So it's a, you can put big flashlights and stuff in here. I have done larger flashlights as well on this. It is fantastic for carrying a larger tool and a pen or a pen type light like the Lumitop. Right? It will allow the pan light to go through there. It is e by far easier to put on the outside, you guys. There's no doubt about it. The pins really fit in there nicely. Um, that's what I found doing this. I don't do double carries very often. I wouldn't be the type of person who would have, like, say, this for a small, like, in my right-hand pocket. You know, this this being out. I, I, I don't carry this and then put a pen and a larger one in here so I don't have anything in my pockets. Even if I had slacks, number one, this stuff pokes out way more than just having one or two tools, right? Um, number three, if I have cargo shorts or something on, I'll carry my wallet and then I'll put everything else in the pockets. If I have on dress shorts or, or you know, just lighter fabric material, I live in a place where it's really warm. I wear light material a lot, like seven, eight, nine months out of the year. I'm wearing lighter material. I only even get to wear jeans. I only get to wear like real jeans. And by real jeans, I mean something like Levi's or Wrangler's or, you know, standard thickness denim as opposed to like extraordinarily thin denim that costs twice as much, like designer style. Um, yeah, that's like two, three months out of the year. So here, we, here we're at with these. I don't carry this very much. In fact, you guys, I've carried this. If you look the creases on it, that's from shipping. I've carried this so little, it still has the creases from shipping. I haven't hardly carried this in pocket. You see all that? That's from me putting stuff into it. The use and th that this has seen has been almost entirely with me testing it out. Which quite honestly, this high quality leather, I have moisturized the leather a little bit. I made sure it got clean so there wasn't anything left in there. I have moisturized it. I will take care of it again um, simply because I have been doing it and I have been getting these creases in here. So I'll make sure it's moisturized and pressed. But then I'm probably going to give it away. Um, and I'll probably do a multi-tier giveaway because I want to get rid of this pair of three. Um, I do not carry karambits. And as much as I like this real steel shade, it'll probably go. And there's a few others. So this is an EDC video and it has ran long for sure. But let me tell you, you guys, they're worth it. These things are all right in the $50 to $60 range for some high quality, relatively thick, well-stitched leather. The, the, whether it be the top load, I'll tell you, the worst thing I don't, the worst thing about this top loading one, and it is the single biggest leather complaint I have. It is that cut right there non-rounded it is a straight angle that is a tear in the leather waiting to happen they did a wonderful job of cutting the slots with rounded ends to to uh you know spread the stress and see it's even even then it still starts to pull this one was my very first purchase this i carried this one's over a year old and it was carried exclusively for about seven months before i bought more absolutely fell in love with this wallet as you can see it's already pulling right there it's already tearing right you can see the stress from the cars and the movement um this one will have the same things there but it has a angle right there that is literally a tear or stress waiting to happen this would have just came down and around like to a would have continued to in a curve instead of straight there if that would have been curved I'd be a little bit more happy with the robustness. The stitching's great, right? This is probably the worst right there as far as looseness, but they keep it loose. Then it gets tight. Probably the worst part about these top loadings is that they tend to be able to be a little loose. There's a little bit of room to flop around, but in your pocket, you're not going to see as much use. Personally, I love this for being able to carry more. If I want to have a big carry on some of my looser shorts, it doesn't do as well in jeans because it does become so much more bulky than just having several things in your pocket or having a pen like in your shirt or hanging out your pocket. It tends to get a little bit bulky and something like cargo pants, something like that, this is fantastic. I can put everything in, essentially everything in my wallet but a flashlight. I got pen, backup knife, a pry bar, and all my essentials as far as like, you know, like cards and everything, financials and essentials, all fits in this while sitting in a cargo pocket. Secure as all get out, right? This is fantastic for that kind of carry. 
this is fantastic when I got a different when I got a different kind of wallet or when I had a different kind of wallet and I want or if I want to carry a tool far more discreetly while carrying a wallet if I if I need a larger tool or I need anything to go in there like if I want to carry if I do ever find myself needing to carry a large flashlight and I would recommend it for anyone who wants to carry their tool in a pouch if you are someone who carries large or thick slip joints oh man is this you don't have a pocket clip you you this is a pocket slip that you can really throw it in as well as carry a pen this is fantastic for people who want to carry the larger slip joints i don't technically honestly have any larger slip joints so it would be you know but if you've got anything that's even in this size range ct0609 just regular full size this is fantastic i this i thought i would get as a backup i have hardly carried it it is languishing in my possession and being fully underused and I either resell it or give it away on my on my channel we'll find out my recommendation goes to for my own personal thing again you like carrying bigger things you like having a little bit more room maybe possibly being attached on there but are willing to take a couple of little designs that might make this a little less tough depending upon how you use use it definitely recommend the uh, Urban or Mini Organizer Hybrid. Oh, and this, ah, my gosh, I, the name of this is slipping me and I'm doing this in one shot without reference, so you guys will have to forgive me. Again, they have this there. If you have slip joints, you have another wallet, or considering they all have the same colors, this is going to sound a little bit weird, and please forgive me if it sounds sexist, or quite honestly, for girl carry. And I don't mean by pink. I mean girl carry by me by meaning you already have a purse, right? You already have something that you're carrying. All of your other finance, you don't necessarily have a wallet you're carrying in it. But you do have a place to sit it. You can drop a pen. You can drop a slip joint. You can hang stuff on it. You can put, like I said, you can throw a flashlight on there. If you have all your other stuff carried in another form, right? Whether that be a wallet, whether that be a fanny pack, whether that be just something else. And you want to have one little thing that you slip your knife and other tools that may not be as, let's just say, feminine, right? There's a lot of, uh, without going into genders and all that stuff, this is going to be a whole lot. Um, I think this is a great way. If you're a man who carries it the same way, like I said, I used this a little bit when I was carrying a different wallet. Because this wallet doesn't carry pen carries. I was looking for a way to carry my gear in a pouch or along with my wallet. So it wasn't three or four things loose in my pocket or multiple things hanging on my pocket like a janitor. <laughs> I wanted to have my tools as well as my wallet. And this was the first thing I I still recommend it for it. Again, I say it as feminine because that's the market I first think of, but even as a guy. If you're someone who carries your financials and essentials in a different place and you need something to carry your tools in one thing that looks classy, definitely has a, a bit of panache to it, as well as just some durability and toughness, this again you can get it in this doesn't just come in black i just happen to have the only black it comes in all the same colors it comes in the nut brown and i don't have the the lighter tan with the white stitching that is the they call the uh, english english tan but they have them they have them in other colors by all means grab them uh if those sound like what you use a wallet or what you would use one of these uh, covers for i highly recommend both of these they're really high quality they're really good. They're good for those purposes. For me, the number one recommendation, and it's the one that I purchased after looking and going online and all that other sort of stuff. And again, you can see these are used, man. They got they got beat up marks. If you look real close, you can see these things have been used. They're well stretched out. I do use all sorts of stuff to take care of them. They'll come. There's moisturizers, uh, basics. You can use saddle soap to clean them, all sorts of stuff. I do take care of the leather to make sure it'll stay supple, supple and nice. There's a couple of things on here that make it nice that help this particular one be a little bit more quality. They have stitching that rolls over the seam. I don't know if you can see that, if I can get it just right. If you look at that stitch, it rolls over the seam. That's fantastic. They do the holes at the slots 
so that the edges don't cut and it doesn't tear and create two little wing tears, right? Stitching goes all the way up, the stitching goes up, and then they rivet that. And that rivet is limited to the one side. You can get most of your stuff in there. Um, again, I, I, use the, I use the cold steel lucky one. Um, but any Swiss Army knife, I believe the Cadet is about the same thickness. You can get the same size. There's several of them that are a proxy. A, a Lucky Two would fit. Again, like I said, any this this will the the tiebreaker will fit. That's fairly thick right there. If you take a quick look, right? As long as it's relatively narrow. Probably like I said, the biggest one knife that I found that would probably fit would probably be the Leak in the frame lock style without the clip. That would probably fit in here. I haven't removed it and I would have to try. Haven't actually done it, haven't actually needed to. I can also fit the artisan cutlery biome in there. It just stretches out the leather a bit more. And this is honestly how I use it most. I'm usually running around with it with these tools in here. And actually I don't have, I have, I honestly actually have two lucky ones. My other one is actually downstairs right now. Um, I actually have two lucky ones and so that these two actually essentially sit with tools on them and all I ever have to do is switch out the financials and essentials. So if I grab my, if I want to switch, switch it, I grab them. I have two of them. I was impressed with the brown one so much that I wanted one to go with my black stuff. I highly recommend the three pocket. Like I said, I don't have a need for these two pockets on the backside. What I have is exactly what I'm looking at. I have a need for this. And then I have a need for my ID and other, and other stuff to be in there. And I carry, carry that in. I, this is my wallet. And uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of gear that people send me that I don't actually buy, purchase, or use. So most of the stuff, most of the EDC gear you'll see on here um, is stuff that I actually use and I recommend because I like it. And I have used it. So that's what I have to say about those two. In the end, um, the extra stitching, the the way that the leather rolls around and the only opening is on the side, it allows them to roll the stitching over more often than not. This is the only, only right here, the biggest pull part where it can pull. And it's so little and so well tucked. It, I have yet to pull it on either of them. Um, in more than a year. This brown one, it's been, actually it's been over almost a year and it's been about uh, 17 months almost, 16 months. That's as much pull away as this has got. And that's not even pulling away, that's just loose leather. This is just kind of loosened up a little bit after being stretched out. It's fantastic. Uh, everyday use, check. I I wore this wallet for nine months every day before I bought the other one. Uh, uh, eight months. I said nine, but it was really eight. I shouldn't have said nine. It was really eight. I bought myself this one just be just around April, and uh, bought myself this one for Christmas. Fantastic little gear carriers. Uh, I have I don't I haven't tried the Hitch and Timbers. My ex this is only for the ones that I've got on there. I still highly recommend. I have seen some some uh, nice looking uh, equipment from Hitch and Timber and others where they have bigger gear pockets or or other sort of stuff so you can put your knife in it. I have honestly found very few or seen very few that have the same combination of features and capability as this particular one. This does what I want for a wallet. Again, if usually if I have my stuff in it, all of my stuff in there. If I need something and I if I grab my wallet and run, I go to the store. I know I've got my money. I've got a prior bar. I've got my two most carry tools that I need. And other than having a pen, which I usually carry pull around separate, or if I have, I honestly I have a lot of these little G two minis with little uh, booklets around, little attachments. I have two in my car. I have two in my garage. Um, I have a box of them. I guess. I have little pens everywhere. I'm a big fan of that, as well as a lighter in almost every place, just in case I ever need to make fire. Um, so I have those kind of things everywhere I go. So I don't need them so much, but I do like to carry them. And if I want to carry a pen or if I need, again, if I need a bigger tool load in my pocket instead of somewhere else, I will carry this wallet. 
and I, I will take the time to to open it up. Uh, that being said, you guys, in conclusion, you're not going to see too many EDC gear reviews on here. It's really not what I do. You'll see a couple more. I got some ideas for like some electronics and stuff. Where I'll throw a few things out there, but uh, man, this really is something where uh, I, I can highly recommend these. If you're someone like me who wants this kind of gear, again, they have something for other people, but for me, and in this particular type where I carry something like the Cold Steel Lucky one or like a, say, a Swiss Army Knife Cadet, um, several of them are out there where they have this thin form factor, small, it's easy to put in there. It, the leather will take its shape. You can keep these things well moisturized and taken care of, and they'll do well. They'll do really well really well for you um yeah personally i use a leather moisturizer and i don't I, I tried shoe polish as you can see on on them before i i didn't like it it tends to break up it doesn't work as well on the wallets they tend to move and they're flex and all that stuff so if you're going to use a wax if you want to use something to help keep this i my personal recommendation as a side if you have leather walls all stuff don't want to spend a ton of money on leather care Get some good leather cleaner, some moisturizer. Um, you can get like Kiwi or a lot of the other stuff. There's several of them out there. They're just good basic leather moisturizer, or even lotion. And then some good basic Carnuba wax like you would use on, say, like a cutting board. Just some Carnuba wax uh, and use the Carnuba wax on top of it. It's a nice moisturizing wax. It'll get in there. It'll help protect it as well. But that being said, you guys, I'm going to take the gear out so that you can see these things a little again because... The three-pocket version of the Urban EDC Supply Companion, Mini Companion. Fantastic. It is my personal recommendation. I'm not going to recommend a color because that is a style choice, not anything else. Um, whatever works for you. You guys like black, you like brown. Hey, I got the nut brown first. Giggity. And with that, you guys, this is a full review of multiple articles. It is almost an hour long. With that being said, I'm going to wrap this up. I highly recommend all of these, depending upon what you would want to use them for. But Urban EDC Supplies' whole range of these are pretty darn good. And I, I, I can't recommend them any more than letting you know that... After having one for nine months, I bought another and then bought more of their gear. I also bought this to go with it. Um, and just really haven't used it ever since I since I got this one. Um, I don't know how to recommend something more than to say not only do I recommend it, but I own two of it, right? I bought one and it was so good, I bought another. I don't know how to give a better recommendation than that. Um, again, if you have things that go out there, they have other other... If you have uses and needs that are outside of what this can do they have other things and i highly recommend you look at them on their website to do but for this type of use for the small everyday carry for the type of things that would just kind of roll around and you can do and you can grab and you can have a wallet if you're not someone who has to have a giant knife on them all the time i do not i like to have the tools on me i don't have to i don't go swimming with it right i don't go swimming with it you guys so, yeah, I don't have to have it on me all the time. <laughs> it's just kind of one of those things. But it is nice to have that stuff on. It is nice to have some things on, right? It's just all good. But wrapping this up, almost 55 minutes in. Recommended Urban EDC Supply, Urban EDC Supply Mini Companion Wallet in any color you like. Any configuration is okay. I personally recommend the three pocket configuration because I feel it is the most versatile while giving you a good EDC experience and carry. Um, again, other other things are out there. They have the Urban, or this is the Urban Organizer Mini. It is tiny. They have another three pocket that is bigger that has a large pocket. Essentially, you could, you could probably just do this. And that's pretty much their Urban EDC Organizer where you, you have a... Yeah, they have a large pocket, a smaller pocket, and a pan pocket. They have a ton of stuff if you have a bigger carry or a bigger use for these kind of things. For me, this is the right size. It is exactly what I need. I can just throw my wallet in there, know I have enough tools to get by for what most, I mean, seriously, 99% of my day, that would be, of my days, that would be everything, every tool I'll ever need if I even need them at all. And it'll carry it. With that being said, Hard to, hard to, again, hard to recommend more than buying it with your own money. 
I do recommend it for other people who have that same carry or philosophy. And if you don't, I still recommend Urban EDC Supply for their great selection and other things. They also happen to have some nice exclusives that come out for with some unusual makers that you don't see all over the place, so it is good to see. That being said, you guys, I am going to round this out 55 minutes in on four different things, multiple EDC gear, and a really long review to tell you that this is good stuff and you should get it. Uh, like I said, you can carry other knives. There's all sorts of stuff that goes in there, but in the end, you guys, this is the wallet I would recommend for the type of carry I do. And if you do that same type of carry, I would recommend this one. If you need a little bit more, they have a little bit more. And if you want to go big or go home, they have bigger and more. I just don't have it here. All right. That being said, you guys, I'm going to wrap this up. This has been another dose of Drew. I am said Drew. I hope you have a great day. Go ahead and think about this. Watch it twice. Come back, like, subscribe, and come back in the morning. Thanks, you guys.